is the European Organization of Nuclear Research, or as it's better known, CERN, responsible for the Mandela Effect? It has been a theory put forward by many that are looking for a possible explanation for the many changes they are certain have occurred in their reality. The Large Hadron Collider, or LHC for short, which is operated by CERN is the single largest and debatably the most powerful machine ever created by humanity. The particle accelerator became operational in 2010 and sped up protons to energy levels physicists had never observed before. The outcome of the collision was uncertain at the time. In fact, at the time there was widespread fear that the tremendous energy of 7 tera electro volts or TeV generated by the collision of two beams of protons would create a black hole that would slowly consume the earth and eventually destroy the whole planet. Fortunately, this did not happen and the Large Hadron Collider was a success. And in 2012, it made a major discovery by confirming the existence of the Higgs boson, a subatomical particle, which is part of the building block of the universe, aka the God particle, which will give us a better understanding of how our universe was initially created. Since this discovery, the Large Hadron Collider has been upgraded to ramp up the power and was able to create a new powerful combined collision of 13 TeVs, which is currently the world record. Such experiments might eventually lead us to the confirmation of the elusive dark matter and even parallel universes. It is also this tremendous amount of energy needed for these experiments that many are theorizing might be corroding the very fabric of our universe and unintentionally creating reality altering side effects such as the Mandela effect. But is such thing really possible or is it just an outlandish theory? No one knows for sure as all these experiments are largely in the realm of theoretical physics. However, some conspiracy theories have gone as far as saying they believe that the physicists at CERN know about the side effects these experiments are causing and might even be mocking us. As proof, they point to the video posted by CERN here on YouTube titled, We Are Happy at CERN, in which they play the hit song by the same name. The video seems innocent enough. Personnel at CERN dance to the song with the Large Hadron Collider in the background. The video even features a comical collision. However, there is one part in the video that stands out quite a bit to many conspiracy theorists, and we will briefly analyze this. First, let's talk about the person who is in the image. He is Dr. John Ellis, a theoretical physicist and advocate for quantum gravity and string theory. He has also been a strong advocate for particle accelerator projects. Okay, now let's take a look at the signs. First, we have the obvious one at the bottom. With it even being partially blocked, we could clearly see it reads Mandela. Now for the top sign. That's where things get interesting. It reads bond number one. The first thing that comes to mind is some kind of bonding that happens during their experimentation. However, let's try to look a little deeper into this. In pop culture, who else is a famous Bond? James Bond? Okay, so what does that mean? Well, Bond number one, who was the first person to ever play James Bond. Well, according to 007james.com, a complete history, the first person to play James Bond was Barry Nelson. Is that some kind of clue? Do we now have Nelson Mandela? Also notice the colors used for the word Bond. Someone took their time to use red and blue, while the Mandela sign is just one solid color, but the top is red and blue. Perhaps to let us know there is something more than meets the eye to this particular sign, and also perhaps referencing one of the most powerful Mandela effects, or yet another coincidence, that it also happens to be in a James Bond movie. The Mandela effect which I'm referring to is from the James Bond movie, Moonraker. Although this Mandela effect in my opinion is one of the most powerful, it doesn't get the proper attention it deserves, since many people haven't seen the movie prior to this Mandela effect. However, even if that's the case, a quick look at one of the key scenes can make things clear. This is the scene where the villain Joss, as you might have guessed it by his name and appearance, uses a special weapon, his powerful lethal metal bite. In the scene, he attempts to kill James Bond in a cable cart, but fails, having Bond escape and him crashing into the control room. This is the very first time he and the character Dolly have an interaction in the film, and they form an instant love connection, and she becomes his girlfriend. This instant love connection comes from a similarity in the characters, and one that used to be very clear. As you can see, Joss opens his mouth and reveals his metallic smile, and Dolly does the same, revealing her metal braces. However, that is the Mandela. The braces are gone. 
Now the whole scene and their instant connection makes no sense. And as you can see from the description of her character, she's always had braces. And about 99% of the people that remember the movie clearly remember her having braces. And now they're nowhere to be found. But I digress. Maybe we're just looking too much into this. And this is just an innocent sign. And this is just a bunch of coincidences. Or is it? What do you guys think? Hello everybody, thank you for watching. I have provided links in the description for all the stuff I referenced during the video. If you liked the video, please consider liking and subscribing. I will be uploading more content on a weekly schedule. And I would also love to hear your comments and suggestions for future videos. Catch you all on the next one.